Hey everybody, how's it going today? Sorry, uh, today's class is going to be a little unconventional, but I wanted to thank you for being flexible. Um, my wife and I welcomed our son into the world this week, Owen Robert Colby. Uh, he's healthy, Bria's healthy. We appreciate you guys praying for us and again, being flexible um, in this time where kind of a lot of stuff is up in the air. Um, the assignment schedule on the syllabus hasn't changed. Today we'll be hosting a class discussion online, and this is kind of the opening part of it. When you've completed the forum discussion today and the question part of the class, uh, feel free to go. You must participate by 2 p.m. today on the forum discussion and the quiz, the question um, that relates to King David and Dr. Goodall's first uh, chapter two and four in his book will be due by midnight tonight. So forum by 2 p.m., uh, question by the end of the day. And today, as far as the class goes, we kind of shift gears and begin to discuss healthy boundaries for the minister and their family. The longevity and effectiveness of one service to, to the church really depends on it. And uh, I mentioned Dr. Goodall's book, Why Great Men Fall. It highlights a series of challenging topics that will help us contemplate the boundaries that have been established in our own life. And so the purpose here of these next few weeks is to reflect on these things and for us to be able to reconstruct an ethic um, that is your own, that that you own, that is something that you just haven't been handed and, and say, okay, I'll do this, but something that you actually take ownership of and believe to be true for yourself. And so that's kind of the goal of this next section. And I want us to leave after these next few weeks knowing where our boundaries are. Um, everyone has their own weaknesses, so everyone's boundaries are going to look a little bit different. Uh, there is a common ground that we will all stand on, but again, there's going to be some areas where you have a particular inclination towards something and want to be careful to guard against that. And um, he's going to introduce us to pastoral, fa pastoral failure from 15 unique potential areas of weakness. And you should note that your final project is going to be based on one or more of these areas. So as you read through them, uh, review that in your syllabus and just know that one of these is going to be something that you need to focus on particularly. Uh, chapter one in the book kind of introduces the concept of great men falling, uh, something we're all familiar with today. We read about moral failures all the time, politicians, uh, celebrities, and unfortunately, of course, pastors as well. Chapter two, he talks about entitlement, and he has a quote on page 23 that says this, excessive pride will make us unaware of the small failures that are symptoms and the big failure that could destroy us. Uh, you know, entitlement is a big one for a lot of leaders, especially as they've been elevated up in the ranks of the church. Um, and a lot of men and women feel at some point that they just deserve to do whatever, to do whatever they want to do. Um, I deserve it. It's mine. People start treating the church like it's their own property. Um, and a lot of people end up in a lot of financial gray zones because of that, uh, which of course eventually come back to bite them in the butt. But there's moral issues, um, uh, relational issues too, um, when people feel like they deserve maybe uh, liberties that other people don't deserve or that they're above reproach in one area or another. And it sounds kind of like, well, no, duh, right now, but you'd be surprised to see how many people get caught up in it in the moment. Chapter three discusses entrepreneurs without balance. <clears throat> and this is one that really resonates with me because I'm kind of a, an aggressive type A guy and to know that there's a dark side, a downside to that too. And Goodall is quick to acknowledge that leaders are are winners, right? They're the guys that go out there, the, the women that go out there, they dominate, they take it, they take no names, they just, they, they go for it. They take risks. And risk taking is like a, a real common theme here. But um, with that is a real potential for downfall. They could take risks that haven't been researched thoroughly enough or just go too far. And a lot of aggressive leaders have a lot of success up front and end up crashing and burning their own ministries because they expand too far, too fast. The third area, chapter four, talks about compartmentalization. And it, this is an interesting one because uh, Goodall admits on 36, compartmentalization is the, an ability that we as leaders must have. The challenge is to keep our focus while all kinds of mental noise is going on. And Goodall uh, mentions an anecdotal situation where in one minute you're praying with the family, the next minute uh, you, know, you go from like, grieving with the family that maybe that suffered some sort of loss and then you're up front leading like a Christmas banquet or leading games or you know, you have to be able to shift those real quick and to be able to compartmentalize like who you are, like what your ministry is and all those different experiences of ministries is really healthy. Um, it's essential. Otherwise, you'll just be crushed by all the stuff going on in the church. But later on in the, uh, on the next page, Goodall 
um, mentions that we can put different aspects of our life in the different mental rooms, emotional drawers, but we can even get to the point where we do things that we once realized were wrong and think they're not really harming anyone. And so there's a point at which if your things get too separated, uh, one of those things, you could really go off the edge, right? Um, that's why pastors who will preach about family values and morality and all sorts of stuff could the same week go and have an affair with the church secretary, right? Um, that's why um, you know, th these very ironic situations take place is because uh, women and men leaders have been able to compartmentalize to a point of failure. So striking that balance is tough. You have to be able to kind of separate things so you don't get crushed by the work, the, the task, the assignment, but you also have to make sure that things don't get so isolated that they become something else. Um, where you can experience a type of moral failure that would ruin your ministry. Um, so those are, those are the, the chapters we're discussing today. If you look on Discovery, you will see um, two assignments. One is called How King David Fell, and the other is called... Sorry, I'm just loading it here in my web browser. The other is called something else. It's a forum. And it is called, uh, A Great Man is Confronted with His Sin. So we're going to be focusing on King David here. Uh, you are probably familiar with the story of David and Bathsheba. Um, and so I want you to read the story of the prophet Nathan confronting David in 2 Samuel chapter 12. And in the forum post, let's do it at 2 o'clock today, answer these questions. What does this text tell us about God? What does this text tell us about people? And finally, what does this text reveal about your personal relationship with God? So I want you to kind of process the text and get some application out of it. And I want you to post it on a forum. And once you do, I want you to comment on two other people's posts. This will be your participation grade for the day. And you cannot comment on other people's until you yourself post some thoughts there. So know that um, other people will be reading this. And again, that's due by 2 o'clock today. The other assignment is your quiz for the week, and it is called How King David Fell. And what I want you to do there is uh, reflecting on our discussion that we just had briefly online here and in the text to be able to answer this. In what ways did David, King David, suffer from the pitfalls of entitlement and compartmentalization as described in Dr. Goodall's Why Great Men Fall? If you need some time to refer to your text, uh, I'll allow that. So this assignment's not due until midnight or 11.55 tonight. But I want you to answer that question uh, between 300 and 500 words. And I, um, the response is going to be um, in a Word document that you upload. So there's no online, uh, online submission. You have to write it and upload a file. Because um, I kind of want to see your thought in a little bit longer form like that. So those are the two things. Again, thank you guys for being flexible. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. I'll be looking at my email this week. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great week, and I look forward to seeing you Tuesday as we continue discussing ministerial boundaries and ethics.